that to some. Absolutely. And so uh, for everyone here, if you have any questions that come up, please ask them, post them in the chat. I know that there's going to be questions around, you know, SEC securities rulings, you know, uh, the Howey test, there's going to be questions around stable coins and all the different rulings that could pass ETF, like whatever it is, post them in the chat. We'll try to get to them. We have a number of different topics. This could go over into multiple series. So, you know, if we don't get to something, we will absolutely get to it in the future. Um, and I think, you know, Steve, you, you said it right there. We can start it off with, you know, the, the stable coin legislation and kind of what that is looking like today and what, what's the thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can give a, a, a quick you know, follow up to that is, you know, there is a uh, president's working group paper released back in mid to late uh, November um, around stable coins, which basically said, well, around a lot of things in crypto, but, you know, basically said with stable coins, like, hey, Congress, you know, go ahead and do something about this, right? And there's a bit, you know, Dina will have a lot of, you know, she taught me a lot of this, actually, you know, there's a bit of like a land grab uh, turf war going on between all the agencies, and it has extreme, um, consequences right you know because what is a stable coin a security or is it a bank really comes down to the core question you know depending on who's going to regulate it and um i find it i find it critical because if a stable coin is not acting with fractional reserves like a bank there's no reason why it should register as a bank and then if that legislation passes every stable coin goes out of business and jp morgan is a stable coin you know issuer right you know there's no more terra there's no more usdc there's just us jpm <laughs> right. Um, I might be getting a little extreme on that, but not much. Um, and then, of course, you know, is it regulated like a security? Well, you know, that might be inconvenient, but like, you know, Venmo is regulated like a security, right? Like the cash inside of a Venmo account, right? So it's, it's more than possible to do it. So that is the current debate that's going on. I'll see what Sam and Dina have to say as well. Yeah, well, I think that you're, you're definitely onto something there, Steve, and you're correct. There's there, there's historically though been a land grab between the agencies as to who who regulates what specifically, what's a security, what's a commodity. Um, I find it interesting that um, you know cash currency trading, spot currency trading, is not regulated, right? Um, Good point. It, it's it, it, it's unregulated. So one could make the argument that if crypto is in, in essence a currency, then why should it be regulated? Um, I think that you're not going to find a lot of takers there, specifically in the two agencies that, that we're speaking about. Um, I do think that in terms of um, regulating uh, what's a derivative versus, you know, versus what's a security, um, I, I think that stable coins are certainly not a currency, um, at least yet. I think that they are a derivative, at, at best, they're a derivative that represents um, uh, 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 an issuance of or, or backing of some level of currency, but just like any ETF, for example, um, ETFs trade at a discount to their net assets, net asset value for you know for for most of their lives because there's there's overhead in running them, right? So there's accounting to take into account there. So should stable coins be pegged at a dollar, and if they are pegged at a dollar, how how did they get there? What are the mechanics? I saw a really great article this week. Uh, about Terra and Luna come out and, you know, how algorithmic uh, stable coins are, you know, at, at, at first were thought to be a little bit hokey and there were a lot of questions, but now they're kind of being viewed as, hey, maybe this is the, the um, you know, the, the, the way of the future. Uh, you know, on, on that same note, you know, my, um, my experience and my bent on this is a little bit different. I've got a ton of experience uh, uh, every in almost every aspect of the financial industry, going back to being a floor trader, I alluded to that in our pre-conference call, um, going back to being a floor trader, um, building technology companies, being CIO, COO, and CEO of exchanges, um, and then being the CIO of FINRA for two years, uh, which entailed lots of, lots of different technological challenges plus cultural challenges, right? Um, so kind of moving it forward, um, you know, I, I think that it's, um, you, you know, we're at a really, really interesting place as to defining exactly what it, what, what it is that we're trading, right? Are we trading a derivative? And if we are trading a derivative, who should be, who, who should be regula regulating that? And I think that we're going to get into that a little bit later in terms of the, the morass that we're seeing um, in DC, but I'll, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll kind of kick up this question. I, I'm sure Dina has a has uh, probably a more educated um, um, opinion on this than I do, but um, just from what I'm seeing, 
Um, if you take something like Terra, for example, not Terra, um, uh, Tether, for example, um, if you're trading on some of the overseas exchanges, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of derivatives based on USDT. I think it's getting to the point where um, I think Binance, something like 80 to $90 billion a day of Binance is being transacted in USDT um, based derivatives, whereas about 10, you know, 10 to 11 million, maybe a billion uh, is being transacted in the spot market. Right. So, you know, what, what does that tell you about what, what it is that we're trading a and B, what does it tell you about, well, um, we have a very large um, uh, ecosystem that's being built on stable coins and is worldwide. And there's billions and billions of dollars that are going in and out of this every day um, around a currency like, um, like Tether. Now, as a footnote, I should, I, I should probably point out that a lot of exchanges in, the, in, the, in, in, in recent weeks um, have launched USDC, uh, which is, um, which, which is a Tether competitor, quote unquote, stable coin, USDC based derivatives and futures and contracts to trade. Um, now, what does that have to do with us, right? Well, in the United States, we don't have any of that. We basically have an exchange, the CME, uh, which I'm an alum, thank you very much. Um, uh, we have one exchange, um, and this also goes into the regulatory conversation. We have one exchange that trades futures and nobody else can. And you have exchanges like FTX, which used to be LedgerX, you have ErisX, which is owned by SIBO. Um, you, you, ha you have Coinbase, um, and I'm sure they would all love to trade futures, but they're not allowed to yet. And, and, and why would that be? Um, we can answer that later, but I'll put it, I'll, I'll put it up to the panel. One quick thing I'd like to just interject before Dina gives us her wisdom is um, I view stable coins also, I, I agree with everything you said, but I want to add one note just for the listeners is you know, all of us on this panel obviously are probably have been in crypto for a while, like, like, or you wouldn't be interested in, you would have seen the tweets that come join. But I, I view stable coins as an asset also that people will hold, like my dad, you know, like who wants to open up a Coinbase account or an FTX account, whatever. And he might go put a couple thousand dollars into USDT or USDC, whatever one, and then use it as a, um, you know, for pre-settlement, right? Like, you know, basically use it, but then exchange it into Ether if he wants to buy some Ether or some DeFi coin or whatever it is, right? Like it's the symbol of that, like, you know, once the stock markets went to T plus three back around like 30 years ago uh, for trade settlement, everyone started putting cash in their brokerage accounts and the brokerages started becoming like mini banks, right? And had to like, you know, started the, the amount of cash that went into like the Morgan Stanley's and the Fidelity's of the world shot up. So I, I view stablecoin as an on-ramp for, you know, regular people like coming into crypto. And then folks like us, it's like where we, instead of having to like convert from fiat, because especially if you do that on exchange, they have like five day waiting periods. You just hold it into stable coin because you know it's going to be roughly a dollar and then you use it to go into Ethereum. So I, I view it as a critical, uh, besides all the arbitrage and derivatives and futures and all that, I view it as a critical thing just to facilitate the ease of trading, right? Um, you know, and then you don't have to deal with fiat as much, right? You just dump it into the stable coin. So. Um, I, I, that's that's why I'm such an interest in the issue. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly that's exactly my point. That's exactly what I was getting at. In in the world of centralized exchanges and even in decentralized exchanges, the um, the lingua franca is USDT or USDC. Um, you can settle, and we do um, you know we do some off exchange trading ourselves, um, and counterparties prefer and we prefer to settle with USDC. It's just easier. Um, I'm sending it by the Ethereum chain. It goes out, it comes in. My, I don't have to send a wire. I don't have to go through the Fed system. I'm not trying to avoid anything. I, you know, I, I had a saying when I was the when I was the CIO at NYMEX, and we were dealing with uh, the same sort of regulatory question about um, you know ICE is operating the International Petroleum Exchange in London, uh, but it's being cleared and traded in Chicago and mostly by folks in the U.S. Um, you know, do they need to be regulated by by the U.S.? And so it's kind of like um, the saying was, is that capital finds a way to go where the least amount of friction is. 
And as my short way of saying, or my long way of saying, um, that you know, we much prefer to just kind of exchange USDC and you know our ETH and USDC back and forth. And um, it's it's not it doesn't have to do with anything other than the fact that it's easier, quicker, and cheaper. 